on a casual day at Angel Island, Knuckles receives a letter from Egg Robo. The letter states, upvote this because it's my cake day, or scroll past to instantly lose the ability to walk. As Knuckles hates upvote memes, he decided to throw that letter away, and it was then he soon realised that he should never underestimate the power of upvote memes. Knuckles isn't able to walk. No matter how hard he tries, it is not possible. So he's on a quest to reverse this curse and to stop Egg Robo from posting any more of his upvote memes. You probably heard of beating insert 2D Sonic game with Knuckles here without pressing left or right, but what if it does translate in a 3D environment? Well, I'm here to tell you that this is a very stupid idea. That with the magic of modding, I managed to replicate this in Sonic Adventure 2. And yes, I'm going to play the entire game like this. Let's make this abundantly clear before I start. I used the mod to nullify Knuckles' running and walking speed. While I can still run down the slopes, any attempt of moving with the control stick on a flat surface will only turn Knuckles in that direction. However, if Knuckles has momentum, he may keep it, unless if he turns too much or is on a slope of some kind. So the best form of movement is punching, gliding and climbing. I also want to give a quick shout out to main memory for making it possible to force Knuckles in every stage. This wouldn't have been possible without them or their mod. Not to mention their physics swap mod, which allowed me to negate Knuckles from moving. I've left links to all the mods that I've used in this video if you want to try them out yourself. Knowing that unlike Sonic, he can beat every Sonic game in a 2D environment without walking, but what about in a 3D environment? Let's see how this pans out. Stage 1, City Escape. It seems that Knuckles is wanted by the military for some reason, and is held captive. Fortunately, he managed to break free and tears the metal plane off the wing to create a makeshift snowboard and free falls. Somehow, after the fall, he is... Okay? Never mind. The stage plays as you'd expect until after the snowboarding section. Normally, you'd be able to walk around as Sonic, but you're playing as Knuckles and cannot move either. <laughs> At this point I recommend making quick jumps and gliding, and or punching to move forward. Everything is hunky dory until you get up to the shuttle loop, and if you thought that not being able to move forward was cursed, you're gonna tear your hair out of this. Normally Knuckles will be able to run past just fine, but with this challenge it's a nightmare to get past. I have no real strategy to beat this other than to mash the jump button and action button while his Knuckles, or Knuckles is upside down, and hope that the game pushes him down the building to continue forward. The drill claw can send Knuckles upward if he's upside down, so can gliding if Knuckles is on his side. Knowing that, get the one up to flex your knowledge and to continue forward as usual, but with Knuckles. Now, if you thought that the shuttle loop was a saying check you're in for a treat, there's this tight space which we meant to somersault under. Knuckles cannot somersault, and they barred off the top of the stage as Sonic can easily jump over. There's no way of getting past his Knucks, as he can't climb over nor crawl under, so does this mean that first station and it isn't even possible? It might seem that way until your boy Swankybox told me that there is collision on top of everywhere of the stage, except for this park and other similar places. I climbed over, and with the help from freeing the camera, I managed to overcome this seemingly impossible hurdle and got to the truck stage. I did this as the vanilla camera is anything but friendly, and it often positioned itself on the stage staring at a wall or at the floor making it a blind glide. Now that Knuckles overcame what seemed to be an impossible hurdle, it's time to get chased by the gun truck. Uh, trust me, the truck is chasing Knuckles, it's just the fact that the free camera is still enabled, hence you're seeing the action unfold from the truck driver's perspective. Once outsmarting the imaginary truck, touch the goal ring to escape from the city. And here comes F6 T Bigfoot. I had no issues taking it down, just spiral up when he comes close and bump into the cockpit while gliding. Do this enough time so he sinks into the ground. Because it's a Sonic game after all, where logic is non-existent and the laws of physics are usually neglected. Stage 2, Wild Canyon. Knuckles has gotten himself into a crawl with Rouge, an infamous railroad now thief and gem collector. The problem is that he does not want to forfeit the Master Emerald, while Rouge just wants it due to its value and prettiness, and at the worst possible moment, Eggro decides to take it from the both of us. Without thinking, Knuckles breaks the Emerald and it shatters into several pieces. In anger, Rouge expresses a hatred for Knuckles' actions, and it's time to start finding the pieces of the Master Emerald. All I have to say is that if you hate Knuckles' stages, your opinion might change. Keep in mind the only form of movement is climbing, punching, and gliding. At first this might not seem to be a bad thing until you realise that gimmicks like the updraft are a nightmare to traverse. The only way of moving is to mash the glide button and painfully watch Knuckles move forward at a snail's pace. This was particularly miserable for me as the first piece was in plain sight when this happened. I got lucky and found the third emerald before the second. Keep in mind this game only hints at the location of the next piece as opposed to all of them. The second one was also annoying as Knuckles kept getting stuck against this wall. I don't know if that's because of the mod, but I just wanted to point that out as it's very bizarre. 
but this stage can be beaten without going out of bounds or exploiting any glitches on like City Escape. On a casual late morning we find Tails flying across the sea in the tornado, trying to find the secret military base known as Present Island, what a creative name, where Nox is held captive. However, he finds that Amy is in peril, as Egro seems to be threatening her to swim in the ocean. Of course he wouldn't let that slide, which means it's up to Knuckles, jump in and save her. Now, it's a face off against Rouge. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the progress side that a rival boss is chosen based on what character is being played, as opposed to it being hard coded into the stage. This is likely done so the code is more flexible and easier to make these kinds of bosses. So expect to be facing off against Rouge during these boss fights as she is Nux's rival. I just wanted to point that out as I would have done the same thing if I was programming this part of the game for the reasons stated. Anyway, you won't hear from me to speak technical jargon, you won't see how this panned out. Well just because Knuckles cannot move doesn't mean Rouge can. This was very annoying as Rouge kept on running away, and the only way to catch up to her is to keep punching and hope that you'll pummel her until her HP is zero. Do this enough to defeat Rouge and proceed. Now the job's done, Egro retreats and Amy is safe. She said that she ended up in a predicament as she wanted to save Knuckles. Despite being told to stay put, she decides to venture into the base to save her hero, with Knuckles. I hate to interrupt the video, but while I was editing, I find it absolutely hilarious that um, Tails and Eggman are meant to be in this part, but I forced Knuckles and Rouge instead. <laughs> and they don't act like or play like Tails and Eggman. When Tails takes damage, and Eggman by the way, their mech sort of lets off steam and sparks. And the thing is, is that <laughs> I'm reviewing the video and I've noticed that Knuckles and Rouge both emit smokes and sparks. <laughs> it might have something to do with the fact that the HP is sort of zero. They don't act like mech characters, but I just want to point that out that because I just find it absolutely hilarious. I don't know if you've noticed that, but I feel it should be something that gets more acknowledged in these videos. But anyway, sorry for interrupting. Stage three, prison lane. Right off the bat, we have a slight problem here. Okay, it's a really, really big problem. This gun robot is behind these bars. Under normal circumstances, we're meant to shoot it through the bars with the Vulcan cannon or with lock-on missiles. But Knuckles can't shoot, so my first idea was to throw Omochao through the bars, as I used to throw Omochao at enemies while playing this game as a kid. It didn't work. The bars are completely solid, and Omochao can't get through them either. My second idea was brute force, but no luck. Knuckles just caused an earthquake instead, which still didn't help either. Poking around the room, I found out that Knuckles can go through the steel containers and go out of bounds. So what I did was when Knuckles falls into the steel containers, I performed a spiral up to get out of bounds and glided towards the path beyond the bars. And just like that I managed to get past President Lane's first bars as Knuckles. The rest of the level was fine afterwards. Except for the fact that Knuckles can't climb on most walls in this stage. Don't ask me why, that's just the way it is. Until we get up to the second set of bars. I tried getting the flying gun bots to shoot this gun mech, but to no avail. I tried clipping out of bounds of these canisters, it didn't work either, and my last resort was climbing around it or above, didn't work either. So, the third stage and I have been stonewalled. My last remarks are that this wouldn't be possible unless someone in the Sonic Adventure 2 community and or the SA2 speedrunning community find a way to bypass these bars, and for it to be possible to be done while not be able to move at your own volition as well. As much as it pains me to say it, I'm gonna have to disclose the stage and say it's not possible to beat its knuckles without moving and skip to the next stage. I just hope that luck hasn't abandoned me, and these next stages are feasible. Anyway, after Amy frees Nux from jail, we can move straight on forward to the next stage. Stage 4, Metal Harbor. Bearing the weight of my shoulders from the last stage, I was determined to beat this stage. I abused the way that angles work in this mod, get past shuttle loops and slopes, sections which involve the light speed shoes and homing attack and can be easily glided across if you are a good high point. Which reminds me, I also collect light speed shoes to see Nox's eyes in awkward pose when he gets them. Also, it's a good high point to glide across to a battleship. I also found out that the jets crash into Knuckles like a Mike Tyson uppercut straight out of hell and knock him out of the sky and into the ocean. Yeah, watch your tail and make sure that Knuckles is jumping up when that happens. Afterwards, I climbed over tight spaces which involve somersaulting and glided from the highest point which Knuckles could reach to maximise my chance of getting past the homing and light speed paths. Now I'm on the last stretch of the stage. It involves running across the silo around a missile that's about to launch, and to grab the handle located halfway up it. I was very nervous as this is timed and poor punching can make Knuckles slower instead of faster. But any hesitation I went to the rocket and hoped that Knuckles can make it before it takes off. Knuckles bonked and I panicked as there was only a few seconds left but luckily I managed to get to the missile before it took off. And well, I'll show you what happened. I, th I thought I was going to make it, not going to lie. 
<laughs> Uncle's just bonked and it's just like, I generally thought I was gonna make it. Right, don't mess up. Because I feel the next time it's not gonna, ha it's not gonna pan out the way I want. Right. What did you say about not messing up? That was even my fault! Alright, what do you do after this? Nothing passed me. It seems that despite my best efforts, luck has abandoned me. When you're in this state, Knuckles can't do anything. What was meant to happen was that character's meant to jump onto a snowboard. Since Knuckles cannot use snowboards, unlike Sonic, he does not jump onto the board and thus does not let go from the missile. And you cannot manually let go either. After what happened in prison lane, I was tempted to find a solution to circumvent this. I found out that the snowboarding section is connected to the rest of the level, perfectly visible, has working collision before the missile launches, and is located to the right side of the silo facing from the checkpoint. The problem is that if I cross the silo, the 15 second timer starts, and I don't think I can beat the rest of the stage within 15 seconds from the missile silo. My only option is to try and bypass the trigger which causes the countdown and hope that Knuckles can simply glide to the snowboarding part of the stage and finish the level from there on out. I managed to pull this off by gliding upwards from this slope of the left turn on the final stretch to the missile. I did this until I was at the top of the snowboarding section and broke in and ran through it as if I was Sonic on the board and got to the goal ring of ease. After narrowly escaping the military defences, Knuckles finds himself in the forest with none other than Rouge. She is aware that Knuckles is collecting a piece of the Master Emerald and is willing to mug him from his hard work. Normally I'd be facing off against Shadow, but as I said before, since we're playing as Nux, our boss is Rouge. She has some tricks up her gloves, and is capable of hurting Knuckles if he's not careful. While this boss is easy, it is also very annoying, as Knuckles can get stuck on the fences, and the best strategy is just to attack and hope that you don't fall and hit Rouge enough times till she gives in. After an exhausting battle, Rouge is informed by Egg Robot that the island is going to self-destruct! But any hesitation, she flees quicker than a blink of an eye. Well, there's no waiting around, we better get going! Stage 5, Green Forest. We got 8 minutes to escape from the island. This stage might pose problems as it takes a while to beat Sonic's stages due to Knuckles not being able to quickly traverse shuttle loops. And I quickly found out that a few springs haven't been tuned for Knuckles' bulk, so they could be your downfall. Also interacting with the vines crashed the game. Probably because Sonic was meant to interact with those vines, not Knuckles. So you're gonna have to climb past on the walls surrounding the vines. It's a bit of trial and error, some trunks can be climbed, others can't be climbed, and the rest don't have collision at all. This also means that having some knowledge of the level is vital, as doing this involves blind gliding and some guesswork. You have some familiarity with the level, but not a lot. If you find springs and or floating platforms or paths, you should be where the game intends you to be. Other than invading all the vines, this stage can be played as normal. Just be wary at the time, and you should be able to get to the golem with no problem. Knuckles' diligence helped him narrowly escape the island from self-destruction, and manages to flee in the tornado. Stage 6, Pumpkin Hill. Knuckles' quest has led him to a supernatural landscape, where spooky creatures roam wild. No matter of unnatural occurrences happen on a regular basis. Time to break out your shovel claws as some of the pieces are buried in the ground. Much like Wild Canyon, expect normal gameplay, but the added annoyance of having to climb, punch and glide to move around. This stage can be easily beaten if the patience to beat Knuckles' stages, while having to continuously punch and glide to find your way to all three of the emeralds. Before I move on, I found out that, thanks to this monitor, if you do something bad, you'll end up like Minecraft Steve when you decide to commit digging straight down. It seems we have a message from Meg Robo. He says if he doesn't reach 69 million subscribers by the end of tomorrow, he will piss on the moon. A bright yellow beam narrowly missing Earth, destroying half the moon, revealing its core, and initiates a 24 hour long timer. Knuckles and Amy wonders how Egg Robo possesses such power. Nux is convinced it's the power from the Chaos Emeralds which means Egg Grober can be tracked down with the help of the Chaos Emerald that Knuckles holds, and the police catch Knuckles and corner him. Well, if all else fails, just punch your way out of your troubles. Stage 7, Mission Street. Unlike Prison Lane, this stage is Easy Street, as there are no bars which require you to shoot enemies through them. In this stage, Tails receives the booster which allows it to hover past pits. These pits are perfect for Knuckles to glide across. It's almost like this stage was made for Nux. Most troubles that this stage poses are jets which bomb the road, and this slope where most of the road is destroyed. The problem is that if Knuckles glides on the slope, he'll be facing slightly down, which means he won't be able to make it to the other side despite the fact that it looks like he's perfectly capable if he wasn't slanted while gliding. The only way which I found crossed this path involves following the route where the hidden chair is located for mission 3 of this stage and glide from there. 
After all, this is possibly one of the easiest stages in this challenge. The slope road is the hardest part. Once he recreated the regretful Hulk meme with Knuckles, touch the gold ring and that is Mission Street accomplished. Stage 8, Aquatic Mine. We find Knuckles in an underground mine with raising tides, damp atmosphere, with supernatural creatures roaming the place. This is another Knuckles stage, so I won't elaborate too much as the Emerald Pieces are randomised, which means each playthrough will differ. But my experience was mostly fine, except that getting to the top of the stage was a bit of a pain, as Knuckles has no air movement. I insist on going up there as it's the only way to drain most of the water from the level. I do this to ease the stress of collecting pieces that may be located to lower parts of the stage. This was a good cause, two of the emeralds were located in the lower parts of the stage, which means it would have been flooded if I didn't get into the hassle of going to the highest point of the stage. Once finding all the pieces, that is aquatic mine done and dusted. The next day we find Knuckles trying to collect information on Egg Robo's whereabouts, as he couldn't pinpoint their location with the Chaos Emerald. He was convinced that they are in outer space as the Emerald failed to locate them, but it was then Knuckles realised that he could extrapolate Egg Robo's location from one of the President's transcriptions. Well there's no time to waste, let's find the President! Stage 9, Route 101. Right, it's time to jump into Knuckles' Street Rider and uh... This is Tails, not Knuckles. Okay, I can't get Knuckles in this stage, so I'm going to show a dramatic recreation of what would have happened and continue explaining for a bit. Right, it's time to jump to Knuckles' sweet ride and get to the president. This stage plays out as usual. As Knuckles is in a car, he's not subject to the no movement curse, as he's sitting perfectly still in the car. The only advice I can give you is that don't crash into walls or other cars if you can help it, as it slows you down and the time is vital. Fortunately, the time limit extends if you cross checkpoints, and the limit is not stingy, in stark contrast to the hard mode mission of this stage. If you manage to cross two checkpoints soon, hot pursuit of the president, so don't give up and keep driving as fast as you can while evading cars and watching where the road leads. When there are no other cars on the road, the president should be in sight and you're on the limousine's tail and that should be the stage done. Uh, Knuckles, you're gonna crash to the president's- After President Obama receives an emergency call from Egg Robo regarding the escalating situation with Egg Robo and his master plan, Egg Robo states that if all of his viewers of Obama Gaming subscribe to his channel and for Obama to beat Jump King while Sea Shanty 2 from RuneScape plays on loop, they won't decimate the entire nation with dead memes and epic Fortnite and Roblox compilations. Just after the call, Knuckles jumps into the limousine and finds out that from his RGB ray traced rig that Egg Robo is located in the Space Colony Ark. So we have our sights set on going to Tower Space to get in the Ark. Stage 10 Hidden Base I don't know if you know this, but in vanilla gameplay, the only characters that can sink into quicksand are Tails, Eggman, and Sonic. This is apparently realised that... Knuckles does not interact with quicksand whatsoever, and will cause a soft lock. Checkpoints mean nothing when you have to restart from the pause menu, or quit, and play the stage again as you fell into a non-functioning quicksand. Also, these strange looking doors are only meant to be destroyed by Tails. No longer have I been doing this challenge, I've now realised that, that breakable objects have flags that indicate which type of characters and attacks can destroy them. These doors can only be destroyed by bullets fired from Tails or Eggman. Throwing Omochao also fits into this category, but throwing Omochao is my last resort, as I can't move at all while holding an object, as the game will always kill your momentum. And Knuckles cannot punch or glide either while holding an object. So my only option is to sequence break by climbing and gliding. My initial plan didn't work out as trying to climb over the first two egg walls causes Knuckles to clip into a room with no way out. However, I found out that Knuckles can climb onto the pillars to the left and glide to each one to get to the other side, and continue the stage as normal. Remember what I said about destructible objects having flags? Because these sticks are dynamite and impervious to all attacks except homing missiles as far as I'm aware. The only way of getting up this platform is to spiral up or, or just glide around if there's no pulley. Also, I just want to point out that jumping off the second pulley makes Knuckles jump unnecessarily high up. This is way funnier than it should be. Also be aware that this was designed for Tails, so don't do anything fancy like I just did, although it's going to play from the beginning. And this is where a quitter would say, give up. As there is this weird wall here with no way of getting in without shooting it. About my only advice I can give is to glide directly above the wall and climb on the wall. The camera is anything but friendly and the chance of falling through the stage is dangerously high, as you have no idea where Nox is and it isn't apparent when he falls until it's too late. Therefore I recommend climbing on the walls while you cannot see, as you can freely move around knowing that Knuckles is likely not to fall while the camera orients itself and focuses on Knuckles. Not much else to write home about, just repeat the same strike for the next tower and play the stage normally until you get to the final tower. The final spring launches Knuckles far above the walls, which means it's a simple glide to the goal ring. Now at the pyramid's entrance, it's time to get moving straight through. Stage 11, Pyramid Cave. We can do cool tricks like this and get nice points. Nice. The hourglass operates as it should as they reappear in Death Chamber, a knuckle stage. 
So far this stage can be beaten without breaking the game, although I might have to sequence break as the stage was designed for a high speed character like Sonic, not a slow slug like Broken Knuckles. I also want to point out that Knuckles can indeed swing on horizontal poles, and if he does it initiates his gliding animation which means you get this. <laughs> Grab the upgrade to get the bounce bracelet. I am told in order to use it you must press the action button and jump to initiate it, but it doesn't work for some reason. Probably because Sonic was meant to get it and use it to get to the higher platform, as he cannot climb. After Tom Frulli, I realised that I've got a giant problem. There's this glowing star-shaped ancient key, which Knuckles has to pick up and put into the star-shaped keyhole. I had to keep throwing it and hope that it lands in the area which places itself into the keyhole and opens the door. It's not exactly hard, it's just a patience tester. And of course, that was just an introduction to this gimmick. Now we have to take this key across this windy road with traps and timed doors. The only way of getting these keys through the door is to place it near the door, open it, run to the door, and throw the key through the closing door. Well that wasn't too hard, unlike the rest of the section. I not only have to throw it up these steps, which is also tedious and difficult itself, but I also had to get it up this curve. Note that Knuckles will always throw it even if he's not moving with this mod. The only way I managed to get it up this curve is to place the key on it and grab it, so Knuckles can slowly move towards the boosters and boost up the curve and put the key in the hole. However, this is where our no moving adventures come to an end. This section is only possible if you can freely move. Normally this gives you enough time to spin dash your way through and to narrowly fit through the door as it closes. Since Knuckles cannot go as fast as Sonic is challenged, he cannot make it to the door before it shuts. I believe that this section can be completed with Knuckles' vanilla movement, it's just that with this challenge attempting to boost will kill Knuckles' momentum and force him to move much slower, thus making it impossible to reach the door before the door shuts. It was a tough decision, but I had to sequence break this as well. I glided from the road which leads directly upwards and around where Knuckles is facing somewhat upwards and glided for about a minute, and decided to realign Knuckles when I was already far out of bounds. Unconfident that I was going to make it back, I stuck close to the route and made sure that Knuckles didn't go back into the level. After a long glide, Knuckles bumped into a wall and fell. Right, I'm gonna have to do this again, this time at a much better angle and glide until I nearly went outside of the skybox, which is two minutes. Although going much further out of bounds was maybe a bad idea, as I don't see anything other than the skybox and this big black area. And now I don't see anything. Blind as a bat, I decided to drill claw, as I assumed that Knuckles was far above the stage, and that was a good call as I saw the impassable route, and not long after the swinging ship in the distance. I kept gliding until the final stretch to the goal ring, and after passing through the final shuttle loop, I touched the goal ring, and that's Pyramid Cave done. It seems that Egg Robo sure does like flying their banner around. It's a shame that despite the advertisement, he's not a fan of visitors, as the door is locked and it requires a key to unlock. Amy commissions Knuckles to find the key to open the door. Stage 12, Death Chamber. This is Knuckles, and you've reached the Death Chamber. All I see are steel containers. I'm glad there are hammer gloves made to break these containers. This isn't relevant to the challenge, but this is one of my favourite Knuckles stages, as the stage is divided into five areas, a red, blue and green area which matching lights and corridors, a central area with a big machine that can be heard grinding away, and an underwater area which clearly be accessed with the Mystic Melody. This is only used for the missing Chara and hard mode missions, but what is relevant is the fact that Knuckles cannot swim horizontally at your own will. It's a good thing that I drained all the water in Aquatic Mine, as I was not aware of this. Since the keys are randomised, I'm just going to simply say that after finding all three keys and nearly becoming Paper Mario, that is Death Chamber cleared. It seems we're not alone. We have angered King Boom Boo, and he's not letting Knuckles out without a good fight. To run away, I mash the action button so that Knuckles will only initiate his primary attack to boost forward, so I can get away from his burning belch, and to get the ghost of the timer when King Boom Boo is burping. After weakening Boom Boo with harsh sunlight, I punched my way to its shadow and pause buffered so I could instantly dig when Knuckles is on Boom Boo. Rinse and repeat until King Boom Boo is dissipated. After defeating Boom Boo, Egg Robber is here and summons their creation. Egg Golem has ordered it to neutralize Knuckles. I need to point out if Knuckles falls, well, let's just say that it looks like Knuckles won't be winning that way, other than that the boss plays about the same, except you cannot homing attack out the eyes to the weak point, making it slightly harder than normal. Just hit the weak point enough times and that is Egg Golem defeated, and by time to be getting to the shuttle. Stage 13, Eternal Engine. Oh no, much like presently we must destroy enemies to open the doors. This might be another impossible stage, 
but I never said in this stage none of the enemies are behind said doors, as they're completely opaque, unlike the bars in present lane. So there are no worries, no dangers of soft locking as this stage revolves around shooting. All the enemies which block the way can be easily destroyed, and higher enemies can be caught by climbing up and gliding towards them. And it seems that Egg Robert has set up some diabolical traps. Trying to grab the outbreak will also crash the game. You know what? I take back what I said about crashing due to the fact Knuckles isn't meant to be in these stages. In actual fact, I believe it was one of Egg Robo's diabolical traps. Same goes for the final section. I have to go to the power supply by shooting the sweet point on the generator. If you think that getting on the platform is the way to go, you're kind of wrong, as the game expects you to shoot from that platform until the generator is destroyed. I tried clipping through the borders around a generator, that didn't work out as I hoped, as it's thoroughly blocked off. So I'm gonna have to find another way to bypass the generator, as the gold ring is located inside of it. I found out Knuckles can clip behind these big green containers, so what I did was enable free cam, clip behind the container at the final checkpoint and glide it out of bounds, making sure that Knuckles is not does not end up back in the stage until he's behind the generator to get to the goal ring. I will say that this level is very easy until the end. Stage 14, Meteor Herd. After the emeralds spilled, we gotta go to space and help Knuckles get the emeralds. Yeah, I used to beat this stage no problem, but after not playing this game for a while, I've forgotten the best strategy to finding the emeralds. Knowing that I'd say this challenge does not pose any new obstacles, other than gliding too far out of bounds crash the game. Normally the game turns Knuckles around back into the stage, but I feel with this mod the game isn't able to do that, and thus crashes. Also watch out for falling meteors. Whoever thought this was a good idea is probably the same guy who thought Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis for the Game Boy Advance was a good idea. Since there's nothing much else to talk about, I'll simply say that when all the emerald pieces have been obtained, that is Meteor had done. And of course the third one had to be under a trap. It seems Rouge is back at it again, and she means business. She isn't going anywhere without those pieces of the Master Emerald. The best strategy is to keep punching her and hope that you hit her. Or you could just keep attacking her with the Draw Claw, as by sheer luck I managed to get her in the updraft and bashed her with the Draw Claw until she gave in. After a rough battle, Rouge slips and falls, but Nux comes in and saves her from falling. Rouge comes around and decides to forfeit the pieces she has collected to repay Knuckles for saving her. With that, Knuckles has finally retrieved all the pieces and has rebuilt the Master Emerald. With primary gold now achieved, it's time to go back into the Space Colony Ark and stop Egg Robo to free him from his curse. Stage 15, Crazy Gadget. Okay, I'ma be real with you for a moment. I can't do this stage. It's not because it's impossible, it's just the sheer length to finish the stage is far out my levels of expertise. For some context, Knuckles cannot change the gravity as he's too stupid to use the switches. He can climb alongside the walls to get past. The main issue is that Knuckles cannot break the glass for the high speed warp tube, which means he has to get out of bounds, and this is where the issue starts. The only way to get out of bounds is at the beginning. And another problem is that the stage does not go downwards, unlike City Escape. And in this game, the longer Knuckles glides, the less horizontal velocity he has, which means he sort of goes down like this. And the only way to mitigate is to quickly drill claw and then glide with as few frames as possible. Not only I will get a blister on my thumb, it's also a blind glide, as very little stage is drawn since Sonic is mostly boxed into corridors. And to top it all off, the Tetris area has death planes all around, as Sonic can fall from any angles due to the change of gravity. I'm not a Sonic Adventure 2 speedrunner, I'm just here to share interesting video game trivia, challenges and to see if I can start trends, so I'm just going to have to skip this. I'm saying this can be done, it's just the fact I can't prove it due to my limited patience and knowledge, so take that as you will. After Knuckles returns to the Colony Ark, he sees that Amy is being threatened by Egg Robo. Knuckles sees the opportunity to lend him the fake Wish.com Emerald, and with that he gets caught in a space pod. Egg Robert isn't deceived by the Emerald, they knew that this was going to happen, and sent Nux in a space pod set to self-destruct. At the most critical time, Knuckles wonders if he can use Chaos Control to get out of his predicament. Since he doesn't have any options, he heightens his focus and BAM! The pod explodes. Egg Robert will only let Tails and Amy out if it means that he gets the real Emerald, and failure is not an option. Rouge is back at it again and Knuckles goes up. Whoops, I left my cheat on. Alright, let's do this again. Right, let's do this for real. How about now? Please don't tell me this doesn't work. I have literally no idea why the game keeps on crashing when I'm playing as Knuckles without cheats, but with cheats it's fine? Oh well, look on the bright side. I managed to play this without any upgrades and did it first try as Tails. So I couldn't do it as Knuckles because Egg Robo pulled another one of his tricks, but hey, I deserve a pat on the back because I could never defeat that boss, even with upgrades. After Knuckles used Chaos Control to escape from his bleak chance survival with how little time we've got left it's time to rush back into the cannon from the old school switch through before it fires. 
Stage 16, final rush. Right, let's go. Since Knuckles cannot grind on rails, it's time to glide. And this is how you beat this stage. This is very underwhelming. I was hoping as this is the last stage, it wouldn't be so anticlimactic. Also, watch out for death planes as they vary in height to prevent tedious falling and to accommodate lower sections of the stage. Also be sure that you can at least see the level or its 3D background decorations as they're the only indication if you're above where you're meant to be in the stage. I kept gliding, occasionally drill clawing to ensure that Nux mostly retains his maximum gliding velocity and to check if I'm still above the stage. I did end up the stage a few times, but I'd rather just keep gliding from the highest point. After 10 minutes and 25 seconds of gliding, I got to the goal ring and that's how we end that stage. It seems Rouge isn't quite done yet, as she's humiliated after failing her mission and forfeiting a beloved gem. Right, final boss time, and Rouge is going to give it her all. Best strategy is just to keep punching while keeping good distance and wait for Rouge to initiate a blood wave attack, so she stands still and is vulnerable to Knuckles. Repeat this until Rouge is down and have proven who the best Sonic character is. After Tails has successfully destroyed Egg Robo, it is met with grief and loss, knowing that it lost far more than they could ever hoped for. Knuckles congratulates Tails for his hard work and tells him to look outside, and we see the Eclipse kind of fire a yellow beam that pierces through the sky and decimates the White House. <laughs> I'm only joking. The Eclipse kind of implodes and destroys itself, and we can now say that indeed, you can beat Sonic Adventure 2 as Knuckles without moving. <coughs> That's more like it. Knuckles has effectively shown his versatility and resourcefulness as a warrior who is able to adapt in a three-dimensional space. Knowing Knuckles' limitations, this game can be beaten as Knuckles without moving. Stages like Prison Lane and Crazy Gadget are nigh impossible, since they involve bypassing certain areas which are very difficult. It's not so much Knuckles' fault, but mine. But two stages deemed impossible out of the 16 stages in the Hero Path is pretty good. Considering the fact that six of the stages seemed like they weren't going to be possible due to the hurdles which only Sonic and Tails can overcome. And I'm still scratching my head to us why his second Tails and Eggman fight didn't work, but if it did, I would have managed to beat it. It wouldn't have been easy, but I'd have probably had enough courage to do it. And I hope that you enjoyed the video. I've seen everyone play 2D Sonic games as Knuckles without pressing left or right, and I was hoping to push that forward in a 3D space as no one else has done that before as far as I'm aware. I have other Sonic games which will follow the same premise, so I'm all ears to any thoughts and suggestions. And, before I go, the introduction to some of the cutscenes which I had to overhaul on my first time using Source Filmmaker, so if it was a little bit janky or the camera changing was a bit nauseating, it might have something to do with that. And I've left links to all the maps, models and items that I used in the description. And if you're interested in using Source Filmmaker, take it from me, it barely functions and it's prone to crashing and other weirdness. While it does have a steep learning curve, it begs for an official update or for a Source 2 filmmaker to take its place. 